we started as a company called Toy Talk. And our initial vision was simply, um, what if characters could talk back? So our CEO's daughter, um, before the, the inception of the company, simply said to her father, as she was playing an iPad game, why can't I talk to this character? Like, why, like I don't understand. Why, why can't I talk to the character the way that I talk to you? And so it kind of rang a bell, like, well, Siri's about to be a thing. This was just barely pre-Siri, but there was kind of grumblings about it. It was kind of a notion of like, well, speech recognition doesn't suck now. And so what, what does that mean? Can we build a thing around that? And so the idea of bringing that to life and building a tool set that could potentially allow creative people to author those things and bring a humanity to, um, to just a brand new idea was the idea behind you know, the initial Toy Talk effort. So what we did is we spent um, a number of years iterating on that with a very small crew. And in startup land, um, resources limited, just like Brian said, um, we have to take what's off the shelf. We have to work with what we have, and we have to like, use a skeleton crew to build it up. Um, so we did that. We did that, um, I would say, to great success. And we um, published a few um, very cool IPs. And uh, Which was your favorite? Oh, oh man. Things. Well, actually, um, so we, we did a thing called the Winston show early on, which was this like really zany. It turned it out, turned out to just be this funky 3D character who consequently the 3D. So the 3D animation was directed by Ashley's, uh, Ashley's uh, boyfriend, John Collins, who's uh, just like a, a rad animator and happened to be at Toy Talk at the time. So it's just a small like connection here that I felt like calling out. But um but it's yeah, pretty we, cool. We have no small connections around. Yeah, there's so. just like a lot of small connections. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, so we built a thing called the Winston Show, and the idea was that like it was a funky, fun uh, talk show, and so basically you would boot the, the the app up, and it would know what day it is, and it would know where you were, and and what time it was, and it would say like Good morning, like I have this guest today, and I'll do this thing, and we're gonna go on this adventure, and I have this other talk show, and I have this game show I want to take you on. So it was the idea of interacting and being basically the the guest of an interactive talk show uh, with a really funny, charismatic lead character. So that was a lot of fun to produce. It was the probably the most fun voice I've ever produced. Um, we had a fantastic actor, uh, Dan Clegg, who's now a staff writer for us, voice that character. And I mean, we recorded tens of thousands of lines. Um, we were producing thousands of lines a week at times. Um, so from an audio standpoint, it was a, a great challenge and it was a great bit of fun. Um, so that's my favorite looking back on Toy Talk, but um, to just sort of bring it forward and, and, and uh, piggyback on what you were saying or carry that forward is to say that um, we got to a point when we realized like bots are a much broader idea. So bot was a, ter a term that didn't, it's, it's always existed, but in this space it wasn't really a notion until recently. Um, you know, messaging services like Facebook and Slack and HipChat have started to latch onto the idea of, well, it'd be really cool if we could text with these autonomous characters and it it would be better if they did, if they weren't static, if they had some personality. So they become avatars. They so. become avatars, and and the big question was, okay, Siri's really cool and can answer anything. Cortana is pretty rad, and Alexa is really rad. But what is their personality? Like, who are they? Where did they come from? Why did why do you care about them beyond asking them, you know, what is the circumference of the moon, or like ridiculous stuff, or order me, you know, another uh, uh, box of checks? Like, so the idea was, you know, how can we personify? something great and how can we bring it to the next level? How can we transcend and make it a part of our lives and, and carry it forward? So I think um, we got really lucky, to be honest. Um, at Toy Talk, we created something proprietary called Pullstring very early on in our development. That was our tool to enable um, you know, writers who write, who are used to Google Docs and pen and paper, to author something that was highly, highly technical, took advantage of APIs, which is not a thing that a writer knows about, like an API. Um, so the idea of taking advantage of modern technology and authoring something, um, we needed an interface for that. So we created this thing called Pullstring, which is where our writers could just basically jump in, start writing, and it would, be f it would feel very natural, and, and they, then they could bring a character to life on screen. Um, so we've been develop that, be developing that over the course of the company. And then this thing happened where the industry kind of grew around us and everybody became aware of bots and personality. Um, and so suddenly we realized that very recently that um, it might be time for a transition. So we've, we've now thought of ourselves a little bit broader and we're starting to think of us ourselves more as pull string. That's not to say that we are not going to do original IP and we are actively working on IP. Um, but so, so would you say then Toy Talk has become a division of pull string? Is that a way to look at it? Yeah, I think that's, a, that's, that's correct. Um, what's really cool is that Toy Talk, so pull string does two things for us. It positions us as a platform 
and a creative content company, which is really, really exciting for me because as an audio um, professional, it's really hard to be part of a platform company. We basically don't have a place at platform companies, um, but we want a place at platform companies because platform companies do really well. Um, so that's a you, good. You sound that's like a, a TV thing. series I've, I've recently checked out. I mean, out. I'm saying uh, we're in Silicon Valley. It's a thing. It's a thing. I'm not trying to make a box that fits in a rack, um, but. Uh, you know, I would say that... Uh, Just I would a say voice that, that fits in a box. Yeah, we'll, we'll make the voice of the box that's in the room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what's cool about transitioning from Toy Talk to Pullstring was we position ourselves as a platform and we don't close, we don't shut down the door for uh, creating original IP. In fact, we open that and we widen it. Um, calling ourselves uh, Toy Talk kind of pigeonholes us into the family entertainment genre and very quickly um, partners and, and fans of our IP and... Um, and potential publishers and people have been like, well, you know, you don't just have to make toys. You don't just have to make kids apps. Like adults might want to interact with these things. So the Toy Talk brand kind of kept us in a box. Uh, Pullstring allows us to broaden our audience at the same time uh, position our platform. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pure Mind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at puremind.com. Yeah.